testing, testing, testing. This is a test to see if the wind is too crazy to film outside. It is so windy outside. I asked for your questions and you delivered through my social media accounts. I broke the questions down into topics so I could cover as much information as possible and I'll have little pop-ups of your questions. If you guys think of any more questions that I'm not answering, you can ask them in the comments below and I will get to as many as I can. The first section I wanna hit that you guys asked about were merchandise, prints, collaborations, and art lessons. And yes, I have plans for all of those. As soon as we're not completely homeless, I'm going to launch prints on my website. I'm gonna have some hoodie on hoodie merch and I'm going to start up a Patreon so that we can do lots of collaborations together. I can teach you some more personalized art instruction. I'm gonna hit some topic points, stuff about me, and then move into stuff that might involve you a little bit more. All right, the basics. I am 25 years old. I have been married for almost four years. I just moved from New York right now. I am half living in St. George, Utah, and we are looking for places in either California or Utah. I'm not really sure where we're gonna end up. A lot of people asked how I met Kyler. We met when I was like 13 and he was 17, but we weren't close until much later when I went to school in Utah. I think he just came around since he knew me and asked if I wanted to hang out with his friends. We hung out for a few months and then on Valentine's Day, 2010, I sent him a little text that said, hey, uh, I kind of like you. We pretty much started dating after that and voila, here we are like seven years later. Why doesn't Kyler like being filmed? <laughs> he wants to lose weight before he is really in front of the camera, but on top of all of that, he feels pretty awkward in front of the camera. You guys asked about kids. We will probably have kids in the future, but I'm thinking it won't be for another few years. We want more stability, you know, settle down into a home at least a home state. Okay, just random facts you guys asked about me. My favorite color is green and it is because of the trees and plants. My pants. My favorite song of all time has always been Clocks by Coldplay and that was actually my husband's favorite when he was growing up. Simon and Garfunkel, like the Beatles, Strokes, Metric, Dream, Trance, and Techno songs that my husband's into. Right now my favorite one is Adventure by Disaster Peace. I think audiobooks, podcasts, talking YouTube channels are completely necessary for my artistic practice. I love the Harry Potter series. I'm a total Potterhead. Woo. Ender's Game. I'm currently reading The Name of the Wind and I really like that book. And then self-help books. You are a badass and how to win friends and influence people. And I like suspense thrillers. Shutter Island, The Game. I really liked Arrival and I loved Beauty and the Beast that just came out. It was totally... <laughs> a lot of people actually ask about religion. I grew up very religious, but I would say I'm very spiritually interested and agnostic. Another common question was, who is my favorite artist or an artist I would like to have dinner with? And I think currently it's actually Joseph Raboli. That was my friend's father growing up. He died when we were in junior high school. I would love to sit down and talk with him because I never got to pick his brain about art when I was young. Very inspired by his work and he's inspired by the land that inspires me so much, Long Island. I would love to pick his brain about his technique to just watch him paint. He also had this like total confidence in himself as an artist. Very much lacked self-doubt. So I would love to ask him all about that. My favorite bird is, yes, a chicken. I like chickens because they're so spazzy and chubby and uh, they play hard to get and you can just feed them like everything. My favorite video I've done so far is probably my worst artist mistakes video. And I also really like the skit on my do's and don'ts of realistic eye painting at the end. my favorite and least favorite paintings. I really like the self-portrait I did in like 2011. It was a benchmark where I started feeling like an artist and feeling confident in a direction for my work. Currently, I really like my Red Waves painting and my least favorite would be a commission that I did this year. I did six of the exact same painting and I did it from a very 
pixelated reference. It was very blown out. There wasn't good color accuracy. And I just didn't enjoy painting it six times, trying to make it match each other. And yeah, that was hard. Thoughts on aliens? Um, yes. Yes. There's gotta be something out there, some other life form. I don't know if they're slimy and green. Outer space is humongous, so how could there not be something else, right? Okay, we're gonna move into school and starting out stuff. Yes, I did go to BYU in their studio art program. It wasn't specifically an art school, but I did study art and art education there. I loved BYU's art program. It was really surprisingly contemporary. The teachers were fantastic, really involved in contemporary practice, very open and smart and kind and just wonderful people. And I really loved the structure where we did introduction classes to ceramics, 3D, metal work. And then we got to single out what we were most interested in. We had studio hours. Our class was basically paint like 10 hours a week doing whatever you want. And then we get together with the class and do critiques and talk about art and what our concepts are. The most amount of learning you do is in the studio by yourself. A lot of people ask questions about finding your style and what advice I would give to a young artist or wish I had gotten. If you do a lot of work, you're gonna naturally start to see a style emerge or things that you're naturally drawn towards. And if you just keep pushing yourself in the direction of things you find interest in or passion in, it kind of turns itself into a style. Be patient with yourself. It doesn't happen overnight. And you're probably going to have changes in your style. With that first self-portrait, I entered a world of portrait making and I loved it. And then when my dad died, I entered a world of landscapes and seascapes. And now I've kind of shifted to waves and I can kind of feel that a change is on the horizon again. So I say go with your natural flow and be patient with yourself. Things evolve as you work really hard. Sketchbook tips. This person says, I never finish my sketchbooks. I have trouble finding out what I want them to look or be like. Any advice? Don't be a perfectionist, and I am such a culprit of this myself. A sketchbook should be a place where you just have open freedom to practice. Make your sketchbook just a total fun house for you to try whatever you want. Did I consider any alternative career paths? Uh, yes, only in moments of self-doubt though. This is why I earned an art ed certification. It's because I had doubt that I could make it as an artist and I wanted stability. And I definitely fantasized about becoming a nurse because it was one of those grass is greener on the other side kind of things where I would have perfect stability and security in my job. Do I want freedom and to follow my passion or do I want stability and in the end I chose art and I'm really happy I did. A lot of people ask about self-doubt and that was a very real chapter of my personal journey. If you look back through my journals I just have pages filled of pros and cons lists. I was also super self-conscious about the fact that I even wanted it and what people would think of me for wanting it. And the perception that you won't go anywhere, that you are just lazy, that you're not gonna work hard or be successful. What I did to combat that self-doubt, I'm just gonna read a list real quick. Number one, I considered different careers and I got art ed training. Number two, I actually started teaching art. Three, I talked to people about it all the time and I fretted over not loving my career path. Four, I got a lot of support from my husband and he never made me feel guilty. And I think it's so important. If you can be this for someone, do this. People give themselves enough self-doubt. They hear it from people around them all the time. Really what people need is encouragement and practical advice. Being an entrepreneur and starting a new career path, it's very real and viable and it's not for everyone. But if you can encourage someone and build their confidence, they're gonna be much more successful. Number five, I got into a self-help kick and I read a lot of books. I mentioned You Are a Badass and How to Win Friends and Influence People. And from those, I made a goal to social network, become more extroverted and to tone down my anxiety about talking to people because I had a lot of anxiety about it. And lastly, I just started researching other artists, how they made it work and started putting it into practice. And we'll talk about the things that I learned 
learned a little bit later. Tanner, my Tanner friend. Tanner asked how I find positive energy. There's something I have actively worked towards. While I am very optimistic and happy, I have had to make personal goals around that for myself. If you're not happy, you need to figure out what things are leading to your unhappiness and make very specific goals that you're working towards and working through. It is really uncomfortable at first, but it always gets easier. Motivation. A lot of people ask about motivation to get started, to finish a project, to get into full-time artistry. What helped me is a huge desire to succeed, goals, working for my finances, the support of other people around me, and having variety in my work when I get bored. Sometimes painting can get really boring for me, but what's lucky is that a little bit in order to succeed as an artist online, you need to diversify your income sources. If I'm getting really bored of painting one day, then I can focus my energy onto YouTube or editing a video, writing a skit, and that helps me to work through those boring patches or lonely patches in the studio. Money. Money is always a huge question for artists and I totally understand why because I was scouring the internet for these same things and good, good for you. Like you should be asking these questions. I think there's kind of two routes you could go down. One is the more traditional route, reading, network, immerse yourself in a community of artists, an artist league in your community enter shows, do plein air events, find sites and subscribe to email notifications so that you know when to apply to events or appear at events and talk to people. Or you can go more of the internet route, advertise through all social media networks. You can get a Patreon and you can do prints. You can sell things on a website. You can have an Etsy account. You can get exposure through YouTube videos, be a teacher or just show off the things that you make. And then there's also merchandise that you can sell or you can do both. It's not like back in the day where you just had to get accepted to this one great salon and they made or broke your career. You can be a self-made artist now, so. Lots of options. Any tips for artists starting out on social media? Yes. High quality photos, good lighting, similar and consistent editing or types of images that you're posting, audience interaction, making friends and networking, having multiple social media platforms that kind of feed each other. Honestly, my Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all that started growing after YouTube. YouTube drove my numbers. And someone asked, how hard is it to get noticed on the internet? Are there any techniques you can use to help you stand out? It definitely helps to have things that set you apart and make you memorable, to have kind of sticky ideas that stick with people and they kind of know you for. You wanna do something that makes you just 10% different and, and gives your audience something new that you're offering to them. How do you deal with your income varying every month? For me, minimalism is a huge part of that and saving. Me and my husband know that we want freedom in our career paths and to try things and do new things. And part of that is our living expenses. We keep them pretty low so that we can always be saving away to have the opportunity to use our money when we need to invest in ourselves. If you live more cheaply, then you don't have to be making nearly as much money to maintain your lifestyle. So many questions about what my goals are with art. Right now, my goals with art and business overlap a lot. You can't just be a creator to be financially successful. You have to learn about business. While I definitely want certain things with my paintings, I wanna go bigger. I want my paintings to look creamier, more epic, more deep in their colors and dimension. I also really have a lot of financially based goals. I want to build my YouTube channel. I want to be more financially sustainable through different income sources that I'm about to start launching. So we'll see what happens with that. And in a hundred years, what would I like to be remembered by the world for? I think I'd like to just be remembered for being a really happy person. And as far as my reputation, uh, just a happy artist. I, you know, Bob Ross has it pretty good. He's known for just being a happy artist and a great teacher. I... I think that wouldn't be a bad way to be remembered at all. Thank you guys again for all of your questions. If you have more, make sure you leave them in the comments. I'll try to answer as many as I can. And thank you for your patience with my video making. It's very hard to find a place to film and all of my stuff is in storage. I will get back to videos as soon as possible. Look forward to more do's and don'ts series, worst artist mistakes, more skits with hoodie, hopefully some new great changes and Patreon. I will talk to you guys next time.